Hello everyone, welcome to this video. Uh, let's solve the problem of the day. Well, today the problem that we have is lucky numbers. Let's read it. So the problem says lucky numbers are subset of integers rather than going into much theory. Let us see the process of arriving at the lucky number. So what's the process? It is saying take the set of integers. Here we have taken that. And then first delete every second number. We get uh, the, follow the following reduced set. All right. So what we have done here out of the set of integers that we have, we have reduced it by half. And what we have canceled, we have canceled every other number, every next number. Okay. Then what we are doing, we are after that, we are canceling every third number and so on and so forth. And what do we have to figure out? The user is going to give us a nth val uh, value n and we have to check that if that is a lucky number or not. All right. Let's try to understand the problem with some examples. So here are the sample test cases. Let's see what it is saying. Okay. So firstly, we are given n as 5. Now what we can do? We can follow this uh, like form of this set of integers, which is going to go on. But I have written it till 5 because we want it till here, right? The very first thing we have to do is we have to cancel every second element. So when we do it, we are going to cancel 2 and 4 here, right? So after this pass, what are we going to be left with? We are having one, three and five, right? So this time we have to cancel with three, correct? We have to cancel every third number. So here, what we are going to do the, in the other pass, let me also write down um, the indexes here. All right. Now, once we cancel every third element, we will see that five is getting canceled, correct? So if we are encountering a number such that it is getting cancelled in the sequence that we are following, that means it is not a lucky number, right? So in this scenario, what we are going to do, we are going to return false. Let's take case of 13. What happens with it? Okay. So we, are ha we have written numbers up till 13. In the very first case, we are going to cancel every, uh, every next number. That means every second number. So after this, we are going to be reduced to this set. 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11 and 13, right? Let me also write down the indexes. You might be wondering why we are caring about the indexes because this is where we are going to derive our logic from. Okay, so as you might know, as you might see here, we have to check for 13. Okay, 13 in the first pass was intact. It wasn't cancelled. So that means it is safe from here. Let's see what happens in the next iteration. That means when we are going to be cancelling every third integer. So once we cancel every third integer, it would go like this, correct? So for the second pass also, it is safe. Next come, we have to cancel every fourth integer. But before that, let me write down the set again. The modified set is 1, 3, 7, 9 and 13. Correct. And let me again write down the indexes. Fine. Now we have to cancel every fourth element. So once we do that, ninth will, uh, 9 will be cancelled and further on numbers will be cancelled, which we actually do not care about. Now the scenario is, what will be the left set? Let's write it. It will be 1, 3, 7 and 13. Correct. And what is going to be the next pass value, it is going to be 5 because now or now from further on, we are going to be cancelling every fifth element, then every sixth, then every seventh. But what you have to notice is that 13 is now at the fourth position, right? So if that is at the fourth position and we are cancelling fifth positions and further on ahead, that means 13 is safe, right? You do not need to check further. At this point, uh, notice the point this is the base case right so when the number that we are actually looking for that if it is lucky or not is getting at the position which is less than your pass or you can say your passing values right when this situation arrives and your number has successfully made till here then you can say that yes this is a lucky number and you can return true here fine now let's carefully observe how the indexes are working. 
we have seen that we have to also carefully see what indexes are actually doing see firstly 13th was at the 13th position right but for the uh, but for the second time how many number we are actually reducing if we talk about till 13 yeah currently 13 was at the 13th position but how many numbers are we actually reducing for the first time for the first time what we are doing we are reducing half of the numbers right so we can say 13 by 2 we are reducing this many numbers so it will be we are just taking the floor of it so it will be 6 so when we do it 13 minus 6 it will be your 7 fine and you can see 7 is actually the position 13 is going to lie after the pass correct and once we try to do that again we are talking about the seventh position now we are not talking about the number we are talking about the position where it is lying so once we are here at the seventh position and now this time i'm now i'm not reducing every second number but i'm reducing every third number so how many number are actually going to be getting deleted right we can figure that out by doing seven minus seven by three this time because these many numbers are going to be reduced from the set then for this it will be uh, your 2 and 7 minus 2 will then end up at 5 and this is what our next pass is right so now from here on we can figure out a formula that what we are actually doing after every pass is we are reducing the n with n minus n by uh, you can let's say c for the pass so this is a formula that we have to implement and this is a very simple way of solving this approach you can also notice one more thing that what we are doing here is actually the same operation but we are doing it so many times and the problem is getting reduced well when we are redundantly doing the same thing and the problem problem size is getting reduced well the straightforward answer is yes we can use recursion here so i'd be telling you the recursive approach but an iterative approach is also possible so it is up to you which approach you follow uh, let's try to see the recursive approach okay so what do we have to do we have to create a recursive function with two parameters the parameters are, are going to be the opposition okay remember initially n the number is going to be your position itself because every number is as uh, like is at its ith position right so 10 is at 10th position 13 is at 13th position so for the first time you can say n is equals to your position and with that parameter we are going to actually call the recursive function position and the other parameter is pass okay what do we mean by pass well pass is simply the numbers that you will be deducting so if it is second you will be passing two if it is the third number that you are uh, deducting from the set it is going to be three right and further on now this is the design of our recursive function what is the base case i've already discussed that with you so when position becomes smaller than your pass assume your pass value is five and the position and what is the position the position is actually containing your number your nth number which you had initially so assume your pass has become five and your position is three that means this is the safe place that your number uh, has ended up to what is the thing that you have to do here is you have to return true the number is lucky fine now what check we have to made inside a function what is the body of recursive function here uh, here you can see that if your position is cancelled by pass how can you tell that you can simply uh, use modulus operator and see if that number is actually dividing your position value if your pass number is actually dividing your position value then you can simply return false because that position is going to be cancelled right once this is done that means uh, from here point onwards you can say that number is not lucky if this is not the case then what we are going to do we are going to update the uh, the value of position and the value of pass how position is getting reduced we have seen this formula right the position is your number you can say where your number is standing minus the position divided by the pass number that is going on right so by this formula we can uh, 
we can update the position and we can increase the pass by one because firstly we have to divide second then third then fourth and then further on right and once this is done with the new parameters we can again call the recursive function and the same thing will be happening until we are able to decide whether it is a lucky or unlucky number uh, for the same let's see how the code is working okay so this is the python code for the same thing uh, let me tell you what i've done here this is the function that you would be getting in your prompt and inside that i have passed the two values your n value that the function is giving us and initially i've passed two because we have to start with two by canceling every second element so once we come here you can see i've checked i've made a check that i'm only going to be executing this code if my c or you can say pass as we were doing it is less than equal to the position okay only if this is the case i'm going to be doing this further all right here is what i'm checking that if my position is getting cancelled with my pass i am returning false fine and when it is not happening i'm updating the value of position by this or you can say position minus position divided by c right and i'm increasing the pass by one and i'm again calling the recursive function fine and if, the, uh, if that is not the case then that means the number is already lucky so i'm returning true from here uh, now let's discuss the complexity of this uh, approach for understanding the complexity let's take up an example uh, let's talk about 19 so for 19 in how many passes we are actually going to get to know that if it is lucky or not let's perform the same formulas with it so initially uh, my value is 19 and position is 19 as well and my value of pass is 2 so after the first case after the first deductions the pass will be increased to uh, 3 that is plus 1 and because this is not 19 is not directly divisible by 2 we are going to keep on moving forward so what we'll do we'll do this right it will be this then the position will be 10th correct now doing it one more time because 10 is not divided by 3 is not divisible by 3 so what we'll do we'll increase this value it will be 4 and we have to do 10 minus uh, 10 minus 10 by 3 this time it will be 7 now you can see we are reaching to the conclusion where these numbers are closer and once this number the pass exceeds it we know and we have gotten the answer so for the next time what do what do we have to do 7 is obviously not divisible by 4 so what uh, what we do here is we increase this by 1 and we give it a new value it's going to be 1 and this will be a 6 correct doing it one more time it will be 6 minus uh, 6 by 5 which will be 5 comma 6 here you can see 19 is now at a safe position it is the fifth number and your cut that you have to make from further on ahead is going to be every sixth number that means 19 is safe and it is a simply we can say a lucky number right now you have to notice how many pass did we take how many passes did we take so you can clearly see that we were we just did it in Oh, five in five passes right and what it is near about if you see for every number that we are reducing in this way it is always going to lie near about its root correct so for this also the root is going to be near five correct so we can say the complexity that we are having for this approach is o under root n okay uh, let's now try running this code Okay, let's compile it. All right, it's getting compiled fine. Uh, let's try to submit that. Okay, so it is passing all the test cases. Uh, I hope you understood the problem well. And if you have any doubt, try to rewatch it. And I hope you have understood the question. Thank you.